Hey everybody, it's Christina from Creations with Christina. Welcome back to my channel. It has been quite some time since I sat down and put a card together on camera. So today we're going to be playing with some of the new Spellbinders releases. Well, actually one of the Spellbinders releases for today. This is the quilted stained glass window die, uh, die set. Gorgeous, gorgeous uh, die, and I love this. But this is not the one we're gonna be playing with today. I will be posting this one, um, the finished card for this one on my blog if you wanna check it out. But I'm going to be playing with the Log Cabin die set, and it comes with a hugs and hello die, as well as this pretty kind of quilted, I think believe they call this the uh, flower quilt. And then there's also another one I have just kind of stuck on the back, and we're gonna be playing with this one. Now this might be a little bit of a longer video today because I am putting this together without any plans. I usually plan what I'm going to be doing, but for this particular card, the only thing I planned was that I'm using this die and I picked out a couple of pieces of pattern paper and my size of my card. That is about it. How I'm putting this all together is a mystery to me at this point. So we are going to be doing a card that measures, this is a, uh, six and a half by seven, and then I scored it at three and a half, which I took my die and I measured this. It's about, just about three inches. So I wanted a little bit of a space. So I'm gonna do uh, two die cuts of this, and it's gonna have one on the top and one on the bottom. And I am going to be die cutting this on some white cardstock first, and then I'm gonna die cut it on some pattern paper. These are pattern papers that I pulled out of a couple of the Spellbinders Club kit paper pads and I picked out a couple of different patterns from here that kind of coordinated together and I'm using those for my little quilted piece that we're going to do here. But first thing we're going to do is die cut this onto some white cardstock and that's going to kind of build our little frame. I have been having so much fun putting together the and playing with Spellbinders dies because I love all of the different pieces and parts to them. It makes it just nice and relaxing, just kind of sit down and, and kind of play and put these together. I am going to, like I said, die cut this first in some white cardstock. So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna die cut on our pattern paper as well. So we have lots of little parts, but for this one, we're just going to be holding on to our frame piece. And we're gonna use that to build up our quilt here. And I need to die cut this one more time and have two of these frames. So I am going to just kind of scoot all these little pieces to the side and you can hold on to those because you could definitely use those for another card if you wanted to add some of that white in there. So there we go, I have the two little outside pieces and then all of my little inside uh, quilted parts and I'm just gonna set the quilted parts aside. We're not gonna use those, but instead we'll use the pattern paper. Now I am gonna take the frame and I'm gonna die cut this two more times so that I have kind of a base for my quilt pieces and it'll help me inlay my pattern paper. I have my two frames done, my two pieces for the backing and now I'm gonna take my pattern paper and I'm gonna stack all three of them. Spellbinders uh, pattern paper is pretty thin so we don't really need to worry about that being uh, too much, too much uh, thickness. And then I'm gonna take the inside piece of my die and I am going to go ahead and cut that out as well. All right, so now I have all of these pieces all die cut here and I am going to kind of get these white pieces out of my way so I don't accidentally use any of those. I am already loving how this looks. So we're just gonna kind of pop these out of our pattern paper and set them a little bit into the same order as to how they are on the dies, just so that we don't get confused because I know I certainly would get confused. So I am going to add some liquid adhesive to the back of these frames. I already have one done and I'm gonna adhere that to my solid piece of cardstock. Now I like to use a liquid adhesive because it gives me a chance to kind of move things around, especially because I know I'm filming and I know I'll make mistakes. And I have a lot of little fuzzies that are coming off of my plates. I think I need to spend some time and, and do some scrubbing of my die plates for my die cutting machine. 
So now that I have that done, I am going to kind of play around with the pattern paper. So I'm going to start off with using, so I have the three pieces die cut here, and we're just gonna pull them apart and kind of lay them into the different places on our die. So I'm going to kind of mix around our die pieces or our pattern paper. And I'm thinking I might not use this one um, piece here. I think I might just stick with the polka dots in the floral piece. All right, so we have one more, two more pieces to put in here. I think I'm going to go with the pink piece down at the bottom, and then we'll put another floral piece on the side, which I think is this one right here. There we go. So I really like how this came out. I am going to um, kind of play around with this other one, and I think I am going to maybe do the same pattern or different. I'm gonna try different, and we'll come back and see if we need to die cut this in another another pattern. I was trying to decide if I wanted to make sure that both of these quilted pieces are exactly the same, but I think I kind of like it where they're a little bit different, which meaning I just kind of flip-flopped the patterns. So I did one with like the pink um, on the top and then the floral on the top on the other one, and I kind of like the way it came out. I'm thinking though, I might go ahead and die cut this one more time because I do like this, but it's also bothering me that they're a little bit different. So I am going to die cut my pattern paper one more time using the center part of the die and we're gonna make these so they match. And I have um, that die right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and run that through my machine. So I die cut that pattern paper again, and I kind of laid it out so we're exactly the same on both of these two pieces. And this one is already glued down. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one down so you can just see how um, it's done and we can have a little, little chat. Like I said, this might be a little bit of a longer video. And I needed to just kind of do a little therapy today and give myself some time to craft, which I haven't done in a very long time. Um, and I think I just kind of needed this to sit down. We've had a lot of things going on in our family, especially my side of the family, um, the past couple of months. And it's just been really hard for me to get into my craft room to sit down and craft. So this is kind of something that I needed to take for myself and do, especially as we're getting close to the holidays. When I'm filming this, this is, it's December and, um, you know, Christmas is right around the corner. So we have uh, a lot to do over that, you know, to prepare for the holidays as well. So I gave myself a little bit of therapy today by coming to my craft room. This actually will be my second card. So I have another card that's a part of this um, release that I put together. And I did something I haven't done in a very long time. When I first started making cards, one of my favorite things to do was to pull out my sewing machine. Now, I am not good at sewing, so my sewing machine is strictly just for paper crafting because it, you get adhesive and everything in your sewing machine. And it's just a cheap sewing machine. It has um, doesn't require a pedal uh, to, to run, and especially because I seem to sew like I am driving my car and go really fast. So I can't really sew a straight line for anything. So we are, so I pulled that out um, today. This is, like I said, my second card and I pulled that out earlier today and I sewed onto a card and I have not done that in so long and it was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, and like I said, that'll be a card that I'm posting probably the day after this one is posted on my blog if you want to check it out. It'll be over there. I'll link my blog down below if you guys wanna head over there to see what that card looked like, what, how it came out. And like I said, this is just kind of my, my therapy for today. I just needed a little bit of time to do something um, that was for me. And sitting down and crafting is definitely something I love to do, but it seems like lately, <laughs> there's just been a lot going on that hasn't allowed me to do that. 
So we've only got three more of these pieces to put together. Of course, now I'm getting my fingers all sticky from glue. So we're going to have to kind of clean that up a little bit. And I love how this is coming out. And I think it's going to be so fun on a card. Um, just kind of figure it out what I want to use as a sentiment for this. And I'm not 100% sure yet. But I don't think I want to do the dies that coordinate. Um, there's a hugs and hello die that come with this. But I don't think I want to use that just yet. So we have our card base. I think I said at the beginning of the video, it's um, six and a half by seven scored at three and a half. And the three and a half is just enough to kind of give me a little bit of a frame around. Oh, I forgot one. <laughs> All right, we missed one of those little pieces. I should, probably should have picked it up and flipped it upside down before just to see what pieces I missed. So we're gonna put this on here now. I am going to kind of do it just like so. We're going to use here, and I'm trying to decide if maybe I want to pull in a piece of pink cardstock. I'm going to see if I have a pink cardstock that would coordinate nicely and kind of make it as a mat underneath. So let me see what I have. All right, I was trying to see if I had a pink cardstock that would match the pink that's on here, and it's a little bit too pink. Um, so I am looking to see if I have an ink that would be kind of close to this color. And you know, let's see. Let's see if my distress oxides. Hmm. I have another idea. Let's see, do I want to do the graphite? What color is this? This is, I like this color. This is a pretty color. This is lunar gray. I might do either graphite or lunar gray. I think I can do graphite. I think I like the darker. Lunar gray has a little bit of a greener tint to it. So I am going to die cut this. So I keep all of my cardstock just inside of one of these sleeves, which then I keep in my cabinet right here by my desk. And I don't have any cut pieces, so I am going to go ahead and cut one down. And I want it to be a little bit short, smaller than the three and a half by six and a half. So we're gonna do six and a quarter by three and a quarter for that. So whenever I have a full piece of cardstock that I'm cutting down because I didn't have any scraps, I will do it at five and a half. And then I will use the piece that I need and I stick this one back inside of the folder. And I, it's usually because I want to be able to make it into four and a quarter at some point. So this is going to get cut down to, my card is three and a half, so I'm going to do three and a quarter. And the height of it is six and a half, so I'm going to cut this down to six and a quarter. The arm always confuses me. So there's six and a half. I'm pretty sure I'm at six and a quarter. Um, I love this trimmer, but it does confuse me when I have to do something that's around the six, between the six and the six and a half inch mark, because I get confused. So we are going to make sure that this is six and a quarter. So three and a quarter, three, one quarter by six, one quarter. That looks about right. And then we are going to put our two little squares right in between that. Ooh, I am loving that dark with the lighter color. So we are going to go ahead and mount these. I am going to put them directly down onto this piece here. And I'm just gonna use my tape runner. I feel like I have little pieces of paper all over the place from my die cutting machine. So one thing I usually have to do is stand up whenever I'm trying to make sure things are nice and straight. Um, I go between, and I see another one I missed. <laughs> All right, let's get this adhered down first. So I missed another one of my little pieces of paper, but we're going to try to get this adhered down first. And I am trying not to push down too much on this because I've pulled it up three times already. And I just want to make sure we're nice and straight 
before we adhere it down. Probably a liquid adhesive would have been a smarter way to do this. All right, so then we just have to go in and add a little bit of liquid adhesive to this one piece here. And there we go. I am liking this, but I'm still feeling like it's crooked. All right, this, I'm having, I'm struggling. The struggle is real. So I am actually going to change my mind about this being absolutely uh, a quarter of an inch. And we are going to trim this down once I get this and I know it's on straight. That is gonna be my problem here is I'm having a hard time making sure I'm even on all of my sides. So, oh, now that I don't care, it looks better. If I had just not cared to begin with, yeah, I still think I'm going to trim that down a little bit. I'm going to trim this down, but I was going to use my other trimmer. As long as it fits inside of here, we should be okay. I just need to trim a little, little tiny bit off of each side because then I feel like it'll make it a little bit uh, more even. But at the same time, I also don't want to cut too close. There we go. There we go. That looks so much better. I'm going to set this aside and this is going to get adhered down to here. So the other thing we need to do is just decide our sentiment, but I think I am going to, I, this may arts twine is something I've had for a hundred years. All right. Not a hundred years, but I think I am going to actually, I just feel like this is kind of soft and soften it up a little bit. And we are going to tie a little bow onto here. And I just went ahead and wrapped it around a couple of times. And I am going to do a knot the first time just to kind of help hold it in place. And then we can tie our bow. I just think twine adds a nice little, especially the jute twine adds such a nice little soft touch to our cards. I'm going to trim that down in a bit, but first I'm going to adhere that down to my card base. Just get that centered right on the front or as close as center as I can get. There we go. And I really like it like that, that looks cute. So we are going to trim this down and we are going to figure out what kind of sentiment we're gonna put with this. I have two stamp sets pulled out. I'm not really sure which one I wanna use. So I have this one, it's called Sugar Coated Sentiments. It comes with, goes with another die set. And this one, which is from the, I don't know what it's from. I lost the packaging for it. So um, I will leave a link to it down below. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of different um, sentiments in here. And I think I want to do, I want to do some kind of little sentiment that kind of hangs off of here. Maybe just one word. Maybe. Maybe I'll do the Hello Sweet Friend because these are definitely uh, something that goes with a different die set. But I think I'm going to do the Hello Sweet Friend and I'm going to hang it off here. Now I was going to do my card like this. I think I still am going to do it like that. This is what happens when you think out the process as you're going. You do not know what you're doing. I have no clue what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to grab my misty stamp press and we're going to grab a piece of white cardstock i'm going to do the hello friend i think i'm just going to do it down here at the bottom just to when i go to cut it it'll be a little bit easier make sure our cardstock is still in our same spot and i am going to use because it's right on the top some versafine ink 
and we'll stamp this out. May have to stamp it twice because it is, don't think I've ever used this stamp before. Ooh, per perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so we are going to set that aside. I'll clean that off later. Put my ink away before I accidentally touch it with something. And then grab my paper trimmer, which, what did I do with it? This is what happens. All right, what did I do with that paper trimmer? <laughs> I found it. All right, we are going to trim this down. And it's hard to see that way, so we're gonna do it this way. Make sure we're nice and lined up on the lines. That is perfect. So we are going to, now I'm kind of wishing my bow was in a different spot, but maybe we can do it this way. So we want to make this sort of into a tag. I'm going to cut this at a diagonal to kind of give us that look of a tag. And hopefully we get it right the first time. Well, we're pretty close. And then we just have to use a hole punch to punch a little hole. And I'm just going to grab my crocodile to do that. All right. So I have my crocodile. I love this thing. I have this one and I have the larger one. And this one's older and has probably been around forever. We just want to make sure that we're punching a little down from the, the top and a little bit over. And we can then may have to add a little bow to tie that on, or I could just untie this one. So we're going to trim this down. So we made it into a tag. Well, we'll cut this at about two inches. So we have a cute little two inch tag there that says, hello, sweet friend. And I am going to untie this, but I think that I wanna add a grommet to this because I think it would just finish it off. All right, I found a really cute pink um, grommet and it's just, I did not leave enough space so that it doesn't hang off the edge, although you probably wouldn't see it, but it would drive me crazy. So I re-stamped my sentiment, dropped ink, the ink pad all over the place, got ink everywhere just to re-stamp a sentiment. And I am going to redo my little tag here, but I wanna leave a little bit extra room to make sure that we have enough room for the grommet. So we're gonna kinda of eyeball one more time to make our own version of a tag. I'll cut it down in one second. So again, I'm gonna use my crocodile to punch my hole, making sure that we're in the right spot. And if you've never used a crocodile before, it's four setting grommets. And what you do is you pop your grommet in the hole that you punch and there's settings on here. Now, I don't even remember what setting is what at this point. So I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze that. Looks like it worked. And we have a nice little grommet on the end of our tag, which I really like. And now we're just going to go ahead and trim this down. We're just gonna trim this down. So I think before we did a two inch, I'm gonna go a little bit longer because of the grommet. I just wanna make it look like it's a nice size tag to go with the large size grommet rather than a small tag with a large grommet. And what we're gonna do is just tie this on to our card. And then I'll probably add a little bit of adhesive there just to kind of keep it in place so it's not all over the place and it's in the spot where we want it to be. And it looks like it's, you know, hanging down off of our card. Ooh, that is so cute. I like it just like that. And I am going to grab some adhesive and adhere that down with some of these little mini dimensional adhesives. It's gonna pop a couple on the back. Super cute, I really like that. I like how that came out. 
I'm going to add some gems. Now I think I'm going to do like the, the kind of frosted ones here. And we're just going to stick a couple of these down in the three different sizes. There's little tiny ones I always have a hard time with. And I'm going to try to do it with my tweezers, but most times I end up grabbing it and then it goes flying across the room. Actually, we got it. All right, just adding those little, three little uh, simple gems there. And that is our card. Wow, I feel like, I feel accomplished uh, that we got a card done today. We got actually two cards done today. You just didn't see that one, the other one on video. I hope you enjoyed the little bit of a longer video today. I will leave a link to all the supplies I used in today's video down below in the YouTube description. I will also have a link to my blog if you wanna go over there tomorrow. The day after I post this video, you'll have the other card that I made using the other die set that was released today as well. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next video.